I can't even think about all of the shit I did to fit in. Pass hard to watch like a fucking scary movie. I'm always happy to meet somebody that never knew me. Change for the better, hope niggas are living through me. I put it all on the wax so the people can know the true me. Hard to remain sane when the people you love the most is what's causing the damn pain. Y'all beat by the same thing. We ain't playing the same game. It's all for my fam name. She the girl of your fucking dreams, but to me she a plain Jane. You dip in ball, man. I duck when them calls came. This that higher level thinking. I'm the type to jump the fuck off for the shit before it's sinking. Not here for no new shit. My game slide to boost it. Hey, I don't have to prove shit. Rockstar fight. The fool shit. My movie, this the new script. I want a life with no bullshit. Nigga, I know on these news clips. That's why I dab him and move quick. Won't be around when they move switch. Won't be around when they lose clips. Won't be around for they lose lips. Might be the reason they pull shit. Yeah. You don't understand what's happening here. I'm in God mode nowadays, son. I'm the tribal chief, I'm the head of your table. I'm the provider around here, huh? I'm the greatest of this generation, no questions asked. I'm the greatest universal champion of all time, which makes me the greatest to ever do this. Yo, listen, bro, I hate my job, and I want to make this very clear. Listen, if you are comfortable in your job, do not listen to this. This, this is not for you. you you're not going to care too much about what I'm saying. But if you are not that type of individual, you're the type of individual to go to sleep every night, and you cannot dream and see yourself working these everyday jobs the rest of your life, bro, do not get comfortable in this shit, bro. Keep grinding. I promise you, when you weigh the odds... Like, basically do it like this. I can work a warehouse job the rest of my life, you know, possibly move up the ranks, you know, yada, yada, yada. Or, or I could work these jobs to make ends meet right now to fund my dreams and goals and I can keep chasing those and who knows what could happen. I could, you could meet somebody, drop some type of content. You could inspire somebody who could put you on, could pot, could hear you, but you'll never know if you quit. I'm telling you, I work these everyday jobs. Do not get comfortable in these shits. I don't care if they're paying you 30 fucking dollars an hour, 40, 50, 60. Don't do it. If you're talented at something, if you have a dream, a goal to go be something great, go chase it. I promise you it is far great. I promise you nobody growing up talking about grew up talking about I want to be a bank teller. Nobody said that. I want to work on trucks my whole life. Nobody said that. Truck drivers only want to be truck drivers because either they pops was or either they just realize that's a lot of money to be made. But who want to spend their whole life on the road delivering uh a load here, a load that like who wants to do that? And I got truck driver homies close. I got a brother that's a truck driver. I don't I'm not desired that I don't see the the I don't see the beauty in that lifestyle. But that's just me. I don't I don't think driving a truck around my whole life is a I, that, I don't find that. A, I don't I don't see that and say to myself, man, that's a life well lived. Fuck. No, I'm not. No, no. So I'm saying this to say. If you like me, you one of them type people, keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Let's get it. Mr. Rogers. We hey, yo, 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 yo. We here to talk. Listen, bro. I know it's week. It's I think this was week eleven or twelve. I really cannot remember at the uh current moment. But I do know this past Sunday, the Tampa, the Tampa Bay, the Green Bay Packers headed to Philadelphia to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. That game ended 33-40. Philly won. However, it was actually a better game. Well, the score indicates it was a good game, but it was a far better game than we could have imagined it was going to be. I know a lot of people thought it was going to be a blowout. 
Because like I keep saying, the Packers ain't as bad a team as they look. I don't have no faith that they're going to turn a season around because the most important position is the quarterback position. And the biggest problem on this team, in my opinion, is the quarterback position. Like it's I look at the Packers every single week. And to me, the biggest problem. Well, it's actually two things. One of the things is not I, I it's hard for me to really put too much blame on the second reason. But it's two things to stop in this team on a consistent basis. Yeah, the defense ain't great every week. Like, I don't think the defense was great in that Philadelphia game, but they gave them more than enough chances to win it. The biggest problem with this fucking team right now is the quarterback and the head coach. And the head coach is not a problem in saying he should be fired or nothing like that. I don't even think you should fire Aaron Rodgers or uh, bench Aaron Rodgers. I actually think that's stupid to say something like that, even if Jordan Love looked good. And and I'm not even going to say, like, garbage time because it was still a close game at, uh, at that point in time, I believe. So I watched the whole game. I promise you. So it wasn't necessarily garbage time. The game still had the, like it was still a winnable game. Those last couple jobs with Rodgers is what made it feel like it was garbage time because they just could do nothing. He was hurting. The defense was getting they stops on Philly and they couldn't do shit with the uh with the ball. And so Philly ended up running the rock. Bro, Jalen Hurts had over 100 yards rushing in the first fucking quarter. Chris Collinsworth was like, bro, he got uh, he on pace to run for 800 yards in the game. I'm not kidding. And I believed it. Shit, the way they was letting Jalen Hurts run in the first half, in the first quarter, not first half, not one, two, just the first quarter with time left. Jalen Hurts had over 100 yards rushing. That's the quarterback. So the needless to say, the Packers defense started the game off pretty rough. However, they go down big early and they get right back into the game and tie it. How do they do that? Well, you get a turnover for one that gets you a quick score. But that happened after you have a dope ass drive where you allow your two best players on offense to dominate. I don't care how much people talk about Christian uh, Watson. He is not uh, the best player on that offense. He is not the second or third best player on that offense. Neither is Randall Cobb. The two best players on that offense is Aaron Jones, one, A.J. Dillon, two. Aaron Rodgers, I understand, should be better than both of those guys. He is not playing as uh, well as either of those two guys, in my opinion, when you watch these Packer games. So those are the two dudes you should be running your offense through. And this is how I know Matt LaFleur is not a bad head coach. He know that this is how he should be running the offense and that uh, Aaron Rodgers should be uh, operating off of the play action off of these two running backs like the drive was so crisp and every time they had success in this game either it was because of Dylan or because of uh Aaron Jones setting it up yeah Aaron Rodgers ended up getting his touchdown throws and whatnot but every time these drives were set up the successful ones because Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon and I want to say something if Aaron Jones played for like the Chiefs or San Francisco he would be so much uh, like more popular and bigger than he is. It's got to be because he play in Green Bay under the shadow of an Aaron Rodgers. Because the only problem I think I could say I have with Aaron Jones is he fumbled the ball sometimes. But other than that, Aaron Jones is a stud. I done said it multiple weeks. He the best route runner on the team, and the dude is a running back. He the best hands catcher on the team, dude's a running back. He the best catcher, period, on the team, dude's a running back. So... And that's no disrespect to Randall Cobb. A, a younger prime Randall Cobb would not be uh, caught in this crossfire. But just the offense that I'm seeing right, because Christian Watson don't catch with his hands a lot of times, and he dropped balls a lot. Shit, I think he dropped his first catch of the game uh, in this game. But Aaron Jones is, to me, if you if you watch the Packers play all season, and I some fucking reason I've been watching all these uh, Packer games, Aaron Jones is clearly the best player on this team. Like, to me, it ain't even close. I think Aaron, A.J. Dillon is second best, and it would be closer if A.J. Dillon got even more touches. But A.J. Dillon is – I see that they throw him the ball sometimes, but he can't do what Aaron Jones can do. Aaron Jones can do what A.J. Dillon can do because I think some people can don't realize Aaron Jones can run through the tackles and as out, uh, uh, he can get outside on the edges and can line up in the slot and can line uh, go uh, run a route as clean as that. But did you – Aaron Jones ran a route in this game for it and got got a touchdown off of it. I'm like, bro, this dude is a running back doing this shit. Like, the way you feel about Alvin Kamara and Christian McCaffrey, you would feel that same way about Aaron Jones if, for one, the Packers 
the Packers is on TV. So I really don't know why it is that people don't realize how great Aaron Jones is. And maybe people do. I'm just not aware of this. But I do think he kind of live in the shadow of Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams for so long. That's why po- people possibly because when I hear people talk about the best running backs, I never hear people talk about Aaron Jones. But I always think of Aaron Jones. I just don't put him over Derrick Henry. Long list Nick Chubb. But other than that, it's a free for all for me. I would take Aaron Jones. Up. See, and this is another thing that I love about Aaron Jones. You know how I talk about he is an act. Austin Eckler, who is getting way better this year. I don't think he is a consistently great runner through the tackles. Like if you just want him to be a pure running back, I don't think he do it great enough to consistently be asked to just do that. But when you throw in the fact that he can go line up in the slot, he can go out and catch in the backfield and things like that. That's what to me make him great. Aaron Jones can do all that, but he can actually just be a pure running back if you want him to. Like if you have a game plan and you say, Aaron, we're not going to throw you the ball, but like two times, but we're going to hand it off to you about 20, 25, 20, uh, 30 times. That's fine. He can go give you an 100 yard plus game, three touchdowns, two touchdown type shit. He that's no problem for him. And so for me, that's why I think Aaron Jones got to be a top five uh, running back in the game. I just think with Aaron, you know what? I, I would pay Aaron Jones. Well, he already done been paid, so I don't think I would pay him a, another big contract. But if you take me, I don't know, man. I just think Aaron Jones might got a lot of tread on his tires left, too. I got to find out how old Aaron Jones is, yo. Because that's what I think. Aaron, I would pay Aaron Jones before I paid a lot of different running backs in the NFL. And I don't even think this dude play for a team that's been conducive to hit what he can do for so long. Like he had to become a great receiver because that's what his team do a lot. Throw the ball. He don't even he he ain't played for a team that let him run the ball like other running backs. That could be better for bruh. Aaron Jones is a stud. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care about his production compared to other running backs production because I understand he played with Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams for a long time. So he ain't going to have as gaudy the numbers rushing wise as some other running backs like Ezekiel Elliott, who was getting the ball handed off way more than they was passing it. Uh, Or other running backs like a Derrick Henry who get the ball way more than they pass it at times. So to me, Aaron Jones is a stud. But with that being said, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon should be the catalyst, the bell cows for this team. That's who this offense should run through. And I think Matt LaFleur understand that. But for some reason, they will not force Aaron Rodgers to just go with that game plan for an entire game. Like going out there having these drives where you throw the ball way more than you run, it just don't make no fucking sense. Going out there having drives where you have two bad first downs where you throw the ball and it don't do nothing, but then you try to run it and get bailed out by your run. That's ignorant shit. Like, I don't understand why Matt LaFleur is coaching like this throughout the game. He got drives where he show you where he clearly can be a great offensive minded head coach like he is. I don't doubt Matt LaFleur is a great head coach. I think Matt LaFleur is a good head coach, good play caller. However, this this Aaron Rodgers thing, man. And it's funny because I don't think they should bench Aaron Rodgers. I'm just not doing that. I have to get this last year out of his contract. I'm not unless somebody else trading for him and he going to pay by. I highly doubt Aaron Rodgers getting traded at this point in his career. I highly doubt he even want to be traded at this point in time in his career. So if he want to play, his ass is playing because of what I'm paying him. And the season is lost anyways. So I understand saying, OK, well, now we can put Jordan Love out there. But then people will come back and say, well, if he played good against them teams last year, it's because he ain't had nothing to lose. So it don't matter. That's a lose lose situation. If you want to really start Jordan Love, you can start him next year. If he beat Aaron Rodgers out in camp, it absolutely makes no sense to start him over Aaron Rodgers unless Aaron Rodgers cannot go. And if Aaron Rodgers can go and is telling you he is going to go if he can go. It's, to me, there's no question. That's a null and void uh, type of conversation. If he want to go and he can go and he cleared to go, Jordan Love is not starting. It's just it's plain and simple. I don't care how he looked at the end of that game. However, Aaron Rodgers is becoming a dude who I think he take bad sacks at times. Like, what the fuck was one of them sacks he took against the Eagles, bro? Like, he just held it, held it, held it, and took a sack. I'm like, what the fuck is this? So that is kind of bothersome because once you become – not even mobile anymore where you take russell wilson type sacks that's a problem that that is a problem cannot have that because i don't know if you're not gonna start uh fumbling the ball like a matt ryan i mean that my that motherfucker fumbled left and right so i do think that is a problem next it would be if i'm the um packers 
why would I start Jar- Jordan? Why would I start Jordan Love when I still got to pay this motherfucker Aaron Rodgers this time? And I understand people talking about some, well, you know, you got to pay Jordan Love coming up. Who is about to give Jordan Love an outrageous contract that we can't pay him? It's about to really be a team out there that's going to pay this dude an absorbent amount of money that we can't afford. Stop it. You paying Aaron Rodgers this type of money, you already know if you want Jordan Love back, you will more than likely be able to sign him back. Because, I mean, unless there's some team out there that's secretly in love with Jordan Love and we just don't know about it, highly doubt that Jordan Love will not be on this team next year. Aside from that, no, I mean, and the other thing on top of that is Jordan Love is still young. Like, and he what? if you like what you saw from Jordan Love at the end of that game, well, cool, build on that. Because he looked terrible in other games previous to that, prior to that. So if you think what Jordan Love did was great if you were Packers, then yeah, you should be building off of that in practice. But his ass ain't starting over Aaron Rodgers because I'm paying Aaron Rodgers too much fucking money. Now after next year, it's free game, baby. It's free game. I imagine Aaron Rodgers will retire at the end of the contract anyways. I doubt he would come back or go to another team or make another scene. I doubt the Packers would even deal with that a second time around, especially if he come out next year. Now, the caveat. If Aaron Rodgers come out next year looking like this, then, yeah, I'm starting Jordan Love. Because I actually think this team could be a good team with Jordan Love if they run through A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. Why did you pay Aaron Jones that type of money if you wasn't going to let the team? And I understand he took a discount, basically, but, I mean, come on, bro. And I'm not saying run Aaron Jones into the ground. What I'm saying is the motherfucker is basically a Christian McCaffrey. Well, Christian McCaffrey is basically him. Christian McCaffrey just get the more talk, but Aaron Jones is more consistent because he actually on the field all the time. So I would take Aaron Jones over Christian McCaffrey if you gave me a choice. And that's no shot at my guy, C-Mac. I love C-Mac. But Aaron Jones is always healthy, and he always on the field. And I cannot look past that. If C-Mac was always on the field, I would probably take him. But because he is not, And I hope he can turn his career and become as healthy as he's ever been before he got the contract. I hope he can get that type healthy. But right now, Aaron Jones slips him out by a bit. Now, with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, if they continue, and A.J. Dillon young, so they continue to do what they're doing, I I truly believe Jordan Love could be great uh, in an offense with them. And I think Matt LaFleur would have more, Matt LaFleur definitely would have more uh, control in his offense because, Aaron Rodgers gone. He don't have to bend and fold to what Aaron Rodgers want to do. It's all on Matt LaFleur. And I actually think that would be great for Matt LaFleur. He probably at the point, I'm not going to put that out there. But I would like to see what he could do when he is in full control and command of his offense. He not looking at And I think if Matt LaFleur somehow, if the Packers was stupid enough to fire Matt LaFleur at the end of the season, he's going to have a job before the, uh, somebody's going to get a, uh, I don't know who all getting fired at the end of the season. But Matt LaFleur definitely would be filling in a vacancy somewhere. Now, I doubt Matt LaFleur would take a bad coaching job. So if a coaching job was, wasn't out there that was good enough, basically had a quarterback already. Now, what's interesting is I could see Matt LaFleur being the Chargers head coach if Sean Payton don't go take that job. I would actually want Matt LaFleur as my head coach over Sean Payton right now. Like I saw what Pat, Sean Payton's offenses were the last couple years. I'm cool on that. I would now... Some people could make an argument. He didn't have a quarterback who still had a good arm. Okay. Matt LaFleur's offense just won this motherfucking quarterback who was an aged quarterback, two MVPs, back-to-back. I'm taking that motherfucker. So I think Matt LaFleur, for one, I also think Matt LaFleur, but I think Sean Payton and Matt LaFleur could get more out of the Chargers offense because they're not going to be overthrowing it the way uh, they do over there in um, L.A., they, they, the, that's a ridiculous offense, but we're not here to talk about them. The question was, should you bench Aaron Rodgers? No, you, you shouldn't. This, this video is basically titled that, but that was a very quick answer. I answered it earlier. No, you should not. If he can play, he can go and he want to play. It makes no sense to bench Aaron Rodgers. It's just stupid. And yeah, I stand by that. So to basically close out the video, what do the Packers do now? After blowing that game on Sunday. A winnable game that they could have won if they had just stuck to the plan. Stuck to the game plan. And I don't even think the game plan was to run the ball. But when that shit started working and your defense was getting the turnovers. because you, That's what you just should have stuck with. You didn't. 
I thought the Eagles was gonna run for about 400 fucking yards as a team, though. Dead ass. They was, boy, they was running the fuck out of the ball. But so were the Packers. This was a good game for motherfuckers who I was gonna say something for motherfuckers who like running backs. This was a this was a dope game for you. A lot of talent on display in this game. A lot of talent on display. But before we get on up out of here, oh, another thing. I don't know why people keep relying on Christian Watson to like be. Aaron uh, to be Devontae Adams or some shit like that. Uh, y'all should really get a kid a break. I understand he dropping passes and his only job is to catch passes. I get all that. But this is, for one, he was overdrafted by the Packers. Wasn't he like they first? No, no, he wasn't. I think he was like a second or third round pick. Either way, I think he was a fourth round pick. Either way, bro. You would not have these type of expectations if the motherfucker wasn't playing on the Packers with Aaron Rodgers. Point blank here. So get a dude a break. It don't even make sense. It's so many different things. I don't even think it's a shit ton of taint things wrong with this uh, tings. I don't even think there's a long. Okay. I don't even think there's a long list of things wrong with this team. Like I said, I think the biggest problem is the quarterback haven't been good this year. And when you got a bad quarterback, that can affect the entire team. And the coach, as good as he may be, basically been rocking with the uh, bad quarterback and his decision making as far as like not the quarterback's decision making. He been rocking with him with his decision making is what's Matt LaFleur's decision making is telling me he's rocking with Aaron Rodgers, even though he's literally the head coach out there looking at his offense, have success when they decide to let Aaron Jones be the man. But that's neither here nor there. Real quick, I'm going to run through the games from uh, this past Sunday and what well, is past week. I really can't remember what week it is, y'all, man. That's on me. Work last week, bro. The Thanksgiving week, basically. Bills, Patriots play this uh, Thursday also. I, I guess I can talk about that real quick. But Bills, Patriots, let's talk about that real quick. Who do I have? Now, see, I obviously I want to take the Bills. Because I just don't think that Patriots can score. For one, I don't like the offensive coordinator. I don't like the whole coaching shit that's going on over there in New England. And I don't think Mac Jones. And you, I guess I'm glad I just brought up the Patriots. I watched Mac Jones these last couple weeks. The fact that people watch Mac Jones and think that he is trash, but you watch Justin Fields and you think he is the future. Now that's just fucking insane to me. That's just fucking insane. I talk about how Mac, how uh. Justin Herbert throw the ball too much sometimes. Mac Jones don't even get a chance to throw the ball enough or in great situations a lot. And then Justin Herbert got weapons. Mac Jones ain't had weapons since he touched down in the NFL. He got Hunter Henry, a tight end, that is probably his most consistent guy or his most trustworthy guy. But somehow, and I'm not saying Mac Jones is like some I do think Mac Jones could be a franchise quarterback, but I'm not saying that I think he is. Um, I think he could be better than Alex Smith. I'll be honest. I don't. If Mac Jones was playing for uh, San Fran, you would have a completely different opinion on Mac Jones. And as good as I think he could be, I probably would think he could be even better if he was playing for a team like that. Because I just know they know what they're doing. They got offensive minds over there who actually know what the fuck they are doing. Who didn't just get pitched into this so you wouldn't have to pay them because another team paying them. Like the Patriots is a bunch of jackasses. And the way they run that organization is just dreadful. Uh, but they got the Super Bowl. So, you know, Brady uh, made it so that they can have that type of uh, clout. He, they can do that type of shit. However, I just don't think, personally... That they run a great organization or whatever. That's just me. My man Mac Jones ain't got really much to work with. But, and I mean, do I even got to start about how last time when they had this type of game on a Monday night and the weather was all types of shit, how he demasculin, uh, he he demasculinated, whatever the fuck the word is, bro. His his masculinity Mac Jones had, he just stripped him of it. Strength of the Black Panther. I can't get my shit right today, and I couldn't remember the lyrics, so I mean, um, lines to that. So, fuck it, we move on. Anyways, Mac Jones to me is far better than people giving him credit for. I I just don't see trash when I see Mac Jones. I really don't. To me, for one, he outplaying what he got at his disposal. Two, 
I don't understand how people was going hard on this dude's progression, but you ain't going that hard on Trevor Lawrence. Because I defended Trevor Lawrence because I said he had an atrocious situation last year. Mac Jones' situation is not great. I don't know why people keep saying that. People keep looking at the overall team and not the actual things that would help Mac Jones become a great quarterback. And this thing where, oh, man, he suck, he suck, bro, who was around him to help him? It'd be a whole different story if he was put in the situations that Baker Midfield was put in. That's a completely different situation. Mac Jones ain't got no Jarvis Landry's. And the Browns letting Austin Hooper go, bro, or trading him. Whatever they did to not have him on the team this year, stupid. But I just don't understand the Mac Jones hate. However, I'm actually, you know what? The Bills been playing some close games the last weeks, couple weeks. I'm going to take the Patriots in this game. I'm going to take the Patriots to win it. I don't know why I'm fucking taking the Patriots. I maybe have a different... Nah, I'm going I'm to rock with that decision. I'm going to take the Patriots. The past week, though, real quick before we get up out of here. Green Bay, once again, Green Bay, Philly. 33-40 Philly. Tampa Bay went to Cleveland to take on the Tampa... To take on the Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay went to Cleveland to take on the Browns. Deshaun Elliott. Deshaun Elliott. Deshaun Watson is eligible to play this upcoming Sunday. Tampa Bay loses 17-23. What a trash division division the NFC South is. My goodness. Denver, Carolina. Un-fucking-splicably. Denver, I knew they was bad. I ain't know they was bad enough to lose to Carolina. I really didn't. But they do lose to Carolina, 10-23 in Carolina. Atlanta, Washington. Atlanta loses 13-19 in Washington. Every fucking team in that division with the, uh, I think it's the NFC East. Every team in the division with the Cowboys, the Giants, the Washington uh, Commanders, and the, uh, the Eagles, every one of them teams is in the playoffs right now. That is insane. Chicago Jets. Chicago was in New York to take on the Jets for the New Netherlands to take on the Jets. And they get smoked 10 31 with Mike White. Bro, Zach, you just lost your job. Uh, uh, Buddy didn't play. Fields didn't play. Cincinnati, you know what's crazy? People wondering why Justin Fields' legs is fatigued and how he getting hurt with the leg. Do y'all not watch these games? Do y'all not watch it? And people keep talking about some, oh, why they run him that much? Bro, all them fucking plays is not quarterback design runs. Why would an offensive coordinator draw up about 20-something, 15-plus off, uh, quarterback draws? That don't even make sense. But I digress. Cincinnati went to Tennessee in a rematch of last year's playoff game, and they win 2016. Baltimore went to Jacksonville to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars and inexplicably with a nine-point lead in the fourth quarter. Late in the fourth quarter, Baltimore found a way to blow that shit, too. On a game-winning drive that Lamar gave them, they still decided to blow that shit, too. So, you know, Baltimore going to be Baltimore. And Baltimore lost 27-28. Houston went to Miami to lose again. They lose 15-30. Vegas went to Seattle, and they won 40-34 to on a walk-off uh not catch on a walk-off uh, touchdown run for like, I think it was like a 50 or 60-something yard touchdown run by um Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs having a, do- a fire ass year. My man's got a beard. Now, I didn't even know that. I was going to say a word again. I didn't even know he had a beard. The uh, Chargers went to Arizona to take on Kyler Murray, who was back. And the, um, Kyler Murray, man, I'm telling you, this dude's games look sp- more sporadic by the damn day. But they lose. Uh, the Chargers win 25-24 when the um, Chargers went for two to win the game. New Orleans went to San Fran to take on the uh, 49ers, and they lose 0-13. This is exactly why they went after the quarterback. Because they saying to themselves, bruh, it can't be Cal and his run thing. It's got to be the quarterback not good enough. That's why we scoring 13 fucking points. But who knows? The Rams, who have just become a god-awful football team. Went to KC to take on the um, Chiefs that's been phenomenal as, as of late. And they lose 10-26 to the Chiefs. And that is... Oh, and Pittsburgh on Monday night went to Indy to take on the Colts. And they win 24-17. And that was your week. Either 11 or 12 matchups from last... It was the Thanksgiving week games. Put it like that. It was the Thanksgiving week games. With that being said, I appreciate y'all for joining me on another episode of Kicking the West. Hank. If you're a Packer fan, listen, you ain't got much to look forward to this season. But if you're one of them Packer fans that's saying, bench Rodgers, let Jordan Love play. 
Why? Jordan Love ain't going to be starting over Aaron Rodgers when the season kick off next year. Even if Jordan Love looked better than Rodgers in training camp, Rodgers is probably going to start because of what they paying him. There's no two ways around that. But tell somebody you fuck with him. Tell somebody you love him. Saying out. I got the moves like hot sauce. Little mama taking the top off. I'm laying down getting topped off. After this, she know she getting knocked off. I know she loving the money. So I keep on thumbing and thumbing. She say she horny when she take a shot, so I keep them coming and coming. Now I'm putting dick in her tummy, scoop her up like I'm raking her something. You would think shawty red track, the way that she running and running. You getting dumber and dumber, you out here chasing the bone. After she finished from giving me dome, the Uber is taking her home. <laughs> hey.